the book of Ephesians today. We're going to be in this New Testament epistle for this message, and we're going to look at several different uh, passages, verses here in this New Testament book as we continue to consider walking with God. And I want to encourage you today to think about this truth, that as you walk with God, He has called you to walk in a manner in this world that we live in that is worthy of the calling that He has given to you, the calling that you have received. And so as we think about walk, uh, there's many different ways we can think about walking. Of course, we know Jesus, God has called us to follow him and to walk with him. And so, like in the Gospels, Jesus tells his disciples, come after me, follow me. And so they're walking and following the Lord. Well, we think about how uh, walk is also uh, a, a daily activity as we walk with God uh, in a time of devotion, a time of reading and studying His Word, meditating on God's Word, praying, talking to Him, walking with God in that way. But today I want us to focus on this other meaning of the word walk, and it is uh, the meaning of the manner at which you live. You see, walk also has that meaning, the manner at which you live, how you act, how you think, how you live. And in Ephesians, uh, there's much to say about your walk, the manner at which you live. So let's look, beginning in chapter 4, that's where we're going to begin, and let's look at verse 1 and see this with me today. Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. Let's read that again. Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. Apostle Paul here is writing this letter to the church in Ephesus. And in the first three chapters, he's giving us doctrine. He's giving us an understanding of our position in Christ. He's explaining to us our calling in Christ. It is about uh, principles, And then when you get to chapter 4, you have that word therefore, which is signifying to us uh, there's a shift that's happening. And also, this is a result of everything he said up to this point. He sa he's now going to get into this practical application from chapter 4 all the way through the rest of the book. So it goes to, to practice, to conduct, to duty. So the first three chapters is all about doctrine. The last three chapters is about your duty, your responsibility. One commentator says in chapters 1 through 3, it's about your riches in Christ. And in chapters 4 through 6, it's about your responsibilities in Christ. When we think about our walk, God has called us to a walk in this world, this fallen world, a, a, a way that we are to live, a manner at which we are to live. And in chapter 4, starting in verse 1, he says you are called to walk in a manner worthy of the calling you have received. You're to speak, act, live in a way that's worthy of the calling you are that you have received. Now, what is this calling that you have received? Well, you've only received this calling today if you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, look at, look at it with me in verse, um, in verse 1 and 2. He says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked, according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. But now go on to verse 10. And it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. If you went on up to verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. 
It's not of works so that no one may boast, but it is God's gift to you. God saves you and me out of our sin, out of our rebellion, out of our wickedness from our trespasses. The Bible says that you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but God sent Jesus Christ to this earth to pay the penalty for your sin, to die on the cross for your sin. He died paying that price. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose victoriously so that any person who had placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ would be saved and forgiven and given eternal life, given salvation and called to Jesus Christ. See, our calling is we have been called to be in Christ. Do you know today there is no salvation apart from being in Jesus Christ? You can't save yourself today. There is no amount of good works that you can do to make yourself right before God. If you're here today and you think you're coming to church so that you can be right before God and one day you will go to heaven. You will not go to heaven because you came to church today. Or because you came last week. Or if you come to church the rest of your life, that's not going to get you to heaven. You will not go to heaven because of any amount of good works that you do. No, you simply have salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. You must trust Him as your personal Lord and Savior. He says there in that verse 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So God has saved you and he's called you to be in Christ and he's prepared for you a life that he has called you to live, a life in Christ. A life of good works. Those good works do not save you. But those good works are, are a result of the salvation that you have in Jesus. And so why does a Christian act like a follower of Jesus? Why does a Christian do things according to God's word? Why does a Christian live in a way that brings honor and glory to God Almighty? Well, a Christian does that and should do that because of what Jesus has done in their life. And so everything that we do as believers, it comes as an outflow of the relationship we have with Jesus. The inward change that Jesus has already brought into our life. And so we, we walk worthy here of the calling you have received. The call to be in Christ. Now, that word worthy is an interesting word here. It, is, it has to do really with the scale. It has to do with the scale. Okay? And so if you can think about a pendulum scale, you have where you can put weights on either side of that scale. And what, what you do with that scale is if you get the weights equal amount, it's going to be balanced. And that scale is going to be balanced. And it's going to be even. But if one side has more grain in it than the, than the weight that's sitting there, then the grain's going to go down and that weight's going to go up. But to get it balanced, you want it equaled out. And what it's talking about here about, um, about walking worthy of the calling you have received is, it, is, is this is saying that your, your daily life, your action, your, your, your speech, uh, your living, it's to match up with the salvation that you have. The way you live on the outside is to match up with the inward reality that Jesus has changed your life on the inside. Your your outward witness is to match up with the reality that you have a relationship with Jesus, that you've been forgiven of your sin, and you have 
been saved. Every action you do is to be weighed by your calling in Jesus. That is your salvation. Your life needs to match your salvation. Now some people say one thing, but they do the other thing. Some people say they're a Christian, but man, when you look at them out there in the world, you're like, that person's a heathen. Well, they, they say one thing, but they do another thing. When it comes to walking worthy of the calling you have received, you must match your daily life, your walking, your action, your speech to the salvation that you have. You should be growing in your walk with God and growing in your outward walk towards others. Listen, let me say it like this. The way you live needs to match up with the salvation that you've received. Do you live today out here in this fallen world in a way that matches the reality that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and He has changed your life? I tell you, the church and Christians have a, have a lot of people like to call the church and Christians hypocrites. And I wonder why that is. I wonder why so many Christians are called hypocrites and the church is, is called hypocritical so often. Could it be that so many times... That people that claim to be a Christian don't actually live like a Christian out here in this fallen world? Jesus calls you and me to himself and he calls us to walk worthy of the calling that you have received. When God changes your life, live your life for Jesus. He says... Walk worthy. So as you walk with God, work, walk worthy of the calling you have received. Now, how, how do we do that? Well, there's a, there's a few ways we do that. Some of that's unpacked here in Ephesians, so I want to share some of that with you. Let's look at verse 17 of chapter 4. Here's what he says in verse 17. He says, Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord you should no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thoughts. So once again, we have that theme of walking. He says, therefore, I testify, no longer walk as those, as the sinners do. No longer walk as those people do in the futility of their thoughts. Instead, go down to verse uh, 22 says, take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of truth. And so one of the ways that we walk in a, way, in a manner worthy of the calling we have received is found right here. You are to walk worthy by Walking in the Spirit of God. What God does when you trust in Jesus for salvation is He gives you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to live and indwell inside of your life to never leave you nor forsake you. So just look up here at me for a moment. I want to give you a word of encouragement today. And I just went, there we go, I came back. If you've trusted in Jesus for salvation, if you've trusted in him for salvation and you've been saved, the Holy Spirit has come into your life and he has sealed you forever. 
you will go to heaven because God has saved you and he's never going to let go of you and the Holy Spirit resides in your heart and in your life. No one can take him away from you. You cannot lose him. He is there and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And so even if you're here today and you're like, you know, he's talking about me. I've been saved, but I'm not, I've not been living the way that I should have been living. I'm not acting the way that I should be acting. I'm not speaking the way that I should be speaking. I'm not telling you today that you lost your salvation. Because the Bible tells you that if you have genuinely trusted in Christ for salvation, the Holy Spirit is coming to your life, and he has sealed you, and he is with you forever. You have been saved. But the Bible tells us that not only has the Holy Spirit come to live inside of us, but the Holy Spirit has also come to fill us so that we can walk in power. And so we have to be a people that are constantly going before God, reading the Bible, praying, and saying, God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me afresh. Fill me anew, because I want to walk in power today. Let me ask you a simple question. I would say there's probably, probably many of you in this room that have never done this before. But I'm about to tell you something that's going to hopefully help transform your life. Have you ever... Or do you ever simply go to God and pray and say, God, would you fill me with your spirit today? God, would you empower me today by the Holy Spirit that I would walk in power? God, would you anoint me today that I might live the kind of life worthy that you have called me to live today? Hey, newsflash for you. The life God has called you to live, you can't live it in your own power and in your own strength. You must have the Holy Spirit of God empowering and filling your life to all the fullness of God. So do you ask God to do that in your life? He wants to do it in you. Ask Him. Pray. Every day, say, God, fill me with your Spirit today. Empower me for what... I'm about to do today. Help me. Listen, when you get an opportunity, go and share your faith with somebody. Maybe you go and, and you make a plan. And you say, you know what? I've got a friend at school, and I want to go to that friend, and I want to tell them how they can trust in Jesus for salvation, and you're going to do it that day. Let me give you a word of encouragement. Before you go to that friend, you pray to God, and you say, God, empower me by the Holy Spirit. Anoint me that I may be able to go to this friend today, and you give me the words and the power to share this gospel with them. You'll be empowered by God. Maybe you're in the same place with a family member or a co-worker and you have a, a discussion you need to have where you want to share with them your faith. Do you go to God in those situations and say, God, before I go to this place, fill me with your spirit, God. I need you to take over in this situation. He will do it. He says here to put off the old self and put on the new Put off the old way of living. Put on the new way of living. You see, the old life weighs you down. So you need to throw it off. But the new life empowers you. The new life comes through Jesus Christ. Through the filling of the Holy Spirit in your life to walk in victory. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says to, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let us lay aside every hindrance and sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us. And so what does he say? He's saying, in this walk, in this race, in this journey, throw off those things that weigh you down. Throw off those things that ensnare you. Put on the new self. Put on the empowered self. Put on the armor of God. Put on the fruit of the Spirit as you pray and seek God and say, God, give me the fruit of the Spirit that I may walk in your truth today. Live a Spirit-filled life. How will you walk in a way worthy of the calling that you have received? Walk in the Spirit. 
And let's look at chapter 5 for a moment. Verse 1, he says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. You see, God is our heavenly Father. And when you trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, did you know you're adopted into the family of God? You're adopted into the family of God. Now, here's something scary to think about. I was always thinking about this. This kind of scared me a little bit. Children imitate their parents. So, the next time you're like me, and you're like, why, why is my kid acting like that? <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna, I point at myself now. I'm like, there's some changing that needs to happen here. Because they're just imitating me. You see, we have a heavenly father who is perfect. He is holy. He is righteous. He is good. And the Bible says he is love. And if God is our heavenly father, and we've been adopted into his family... And if we are truly walking with God, spending time with Him, reading His Word, praying to Him, we should be people of love. Because the Bible says God is love. And we are to be imitators of God as dearly loved children. We are to walk in love. As you walk with God, you should walk with love. You should be imitating His love. Are you imitating the love of God today? Is your life characterized by love today? I'm so thankful that when I think about God, one of the first things I think about is His great love. That God loved me. Even though when I was sinning against him, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. That he sent his only son Jesus to die on the cross for your sin. I'm so thankful that when I have rebelled against God, instead of God turning his back on me, he continued to pour his love out on me. I'm so thankful for a God who is loving God is love. The Bible says, Jesus says, that there is no greater love than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. That one lay down his life for someone else. Not only did Jesus lay down his life for his friends, but he laid down his life for those that were spitting in his face. He laid down his life for those that would nail him to the tree. He laid down his life for those that would betray him. God has demonstrated this great love. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's no greater love than the love we see of God, the love that we see in Jesus. Does love characterize your daily life, your living, your walk, your actions, your speech? Let me ask it like this. If someone said, hey, give me, tell me about this person's character, and you can insert your name there, are they going to talk about how loving you are? The Bible says here, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. We're children that are dearly loved by God, and let's walk in love just as God is love. See, if we're going to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have received, 
friends, we must walk in love. We must walk in love towards God, and we must walk in love towards one another. He says in chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, let's look at it here. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Not only should you walk in love, but you should walk in light. That is, we must operate in the goodness and righteousness and truth of God. Goodness is simply love we were talking about a moment ago in action. Goodness, being good to one another, love in action, righteousness, having a right character before God. And when you have a right character before God, then your actions will be right toward fellow man. God calls us to be right before God and have a right character before God and then display that through our actions, our right actions towards other people in truth. We must operate in truth. Everything we do, our love, our righteousness, everything is grounded in the truth of God's word. He says, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, in this verse, he says, you once were, he doesn't say you once were in darkness. He says, you once were darkness, but now you are light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. You know why? Because... Darkness and light cannot coexist. Anywhere there is light, the darkness flees. And when you trusted in Jesus for salvation, the light of Christ came into your life and you are no longer darkness, but you are light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will have the light of of light. He says in chapter 5, verse 15, and here's where we're going to close. He says, pay careful attention then to how you walk. And let's just stop right there for a moment. Do you see this? I mean, in chapter 2, he talks about you once walked in your former way of life. You, you once walked in sin. You once walked in your trespasses. And then you get to chapter 4 and he says, Therefore, walk worthy of a calling which you have received. And then he says, walk in the Spirit. Walk in this new life. Put off the old. Walk in the new. Walk in the Spirit. And then he says, walk in love. The love that God has given you. He says, then walk in light. As you follow Jesus, he says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me, he won't walk in darkness, but he will have the light of life in him. And then you come here and he says, pay careful attention then to how you walk. Do you think it's important today to God how we live in this world? It absolutely is important to God how we live in this world. God has us here, right here and right now in the chaos of the world that we're living in in 2024 for a reason. He has you here that you could walk in a way that's worthy of the calling you have received that will impact the lives of people all around you. Friend, the only way this world is going to change, that this community and our nation is going to change, is if the people of God who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, claim to be Christians, walk in a way that matches the calling that you have received. That's the only way. Your witness 
for Jesus. Being an ambassador for Christ. Don't, don't act one way here on Sunday morning and another way the rest of the week. Walk worthy of the calling. He says, pay careful attention then to how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. You know the days are evil. I don't have to tell you that. You, you watch the news. You, you see it on social media. You hear the reports of things that are happening right here in our community and all across our nation. You know the days are evil. God says, make the most of your time right here, right now. He has you here for a reason. He has called you to himself. He has given you his life. He has given you his light. He has given you his love. He has given you his spirit. He has given you this calling. He says, walk worthy in it. Make the most of this time. Be wise in doing it. So walk in wisdom. Don't walk around just, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how I live. Walk in wisdom. Don't walk by chance. Well, this may be okay. It might not be okay. I might do that. I might do this. Don't live like that. Walk in wisdom. How do you walk in wisdom? You walk in the will of God, my friend. You, your steps should be in alignment. Your walk should be in alignment with the will of God. Walk according to His will. How, you say, but, but pastor, how do I do that? How do I know the will of God? It's not as difficult as you think. It's not some mystical thing. God has explained to us and given us everything we need to know in this life. How we are to live, act, the decisions we're to make, principles we're to apply to our life right here in his word. Right here in his word. And if you'll be a student of God's word, if you'll read it and, and understand it and, and be a part of fellowship in God's word, in Bible studies in God's word, in, in worship where God's word is taught, and, and you'll be serious about desiring to understand it, you will know what God has called you to in this life. How he has called you to walk. To walk in wisdom. Because these days are short and evil. I'll just leave you with a couple thoughts as you think about walking worthy. Is whatever you're thinking about doing, whatever decision that is that you're maybe about to make, ask yourself this. Is that action, is that thought, is that decision, is it worthy of my calling in Jesus? And if you're not sure, then it probably isn't. Is this action that I'm, a, that I'm about to take, or is this action that I did the other day, was it worthy of my calling in Jesus? And if it wasn't, then you need to get before God and you say, God, forgive me for that sin I committed against you. I desire to walk worthy of the calling by which you have called me to. The Bible says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. You see, that's where it all starts. For every single one of us in this room, and maybe you today, you've never started. The Bible says it all begins with the fear of the Lord. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understanding that apart from surrendering, surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. There is no forgiveness. There is no hope. There is no new life. But if you will come to God and you'll say, Lord God, 
I understand my need for you. In Jesus, you're the only way. I surrender my life to you. I turn my life over to you. I'll lay all of who I am out before the cross, Jesus. And I ask you, Jesus, to save me of my sin. The Bible says Jesus will save you. And he will change you. And you will be able, from this point on, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to walk worthy of the calling you have received in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for...